Today, I have a Halloween DIY for you. Now, if you like Halloween, close your ears. I have never liked Halloween. I like scary movies, so you'd think I would, but I've always seen Halloween and Thanksgiving as obstacles in my way of Christmas. I love Christmas. I've always made sure my kids had a fun Halloween. I've just never personally cared for it. But since starting this channel, I've been looking at some Halloween crafts and they look really fun. So maybe I'll turn a new Halloween leaf and start liking it. Today's DIY was really fun to make, so let's jump into it. For this DIY, you're going to need one of these dolls from the Dollar Tree. And you're also going to need some clay, either some air dry clay or oven baked clay. I know that Dollar Tree sometimes has some air dry clay, but it's usually a color. It's, I've never seen white clay at the Dollar Tree. Um, so, but you can paint it once it's dry, so that would be no problem. It would probably just take a few coats. You'll also need some tools um, for molding the clay. And I didn't go out and buy any special tools. I had these Dollar Tree tools already, and they worked out fine. You're just going to cut off as much clay as you think you'll need to make the head the size that you want. At first I wanted the head to be oversized, just like the head on this doll is oversized compared to her body. I thought that would be good. Um, and you're going to need this, this um, um, oven baked clay. You have to knead it a whole lot. It's very stiff at first. But as you squeeze it in your hand, it's going to warm up and it's going to start softening and it's going to get moldable. I have never ever worked with clay before. The closest thing I've come to working with clay is playing Play-Doh with my kids and my nieces and nephews. So this project is definitely doable for anybody. I used a large ish paintbrush um, to use the end to make the eyeball sockets. I was going for like Nightmare Before Christmas, um, Jack Skellington. I was going for that, you know, for a character like him, but a girl. I had a hard time finding online what I was going for. Um, I searched um, girl skeleton um, or girl skeleton doll and what I would come up with is like an actual skeleton looking girl I wanted to be a little more humanoid not like you know what a skull actually looks like I mean like Jack Skellington but um, I did find what I was going for in just one place. There's an artist and I will link her website down in the description box. She makes the most awesome primitive art. I mean, she's like a real artist. Me with this project, I just fudged my way through the whole thing, but she's very talented and I will leave the link to her website down in the description box. I use my paintbrush and this um, other tool a lot to um, do like a rolling pin effect to smooth out any humps and bumps. And then if I ever made a mistake, you can see that um, here, all I did was kind of mark it out and then use my finger to smudge down and to blend the clay. It was very forgiving if you made mistakes.
you can see that I'm comparing the head that I'm making to the doll. And in my mind, Jack Skellington's head was bigger, was disproportionately large compared to his body. But after a while further into this project, I went ahead and looked at a picture of him and his head actually isn't that big. And so I end up later on just chopping off the back of this skull and making the whole thing smaller. To make the nose, I just made a little triangle trying to mimic the nose of a skeleton. And the mouth, I wanted it to be very small. And I wanted to give it just a little bit of a smile. Like, I didn't want it to look unhappy, but I didn't want it to have a big smile either. So I just gave it a little mouth. I kept going back and forth on whether I wanted her cheeks to be sunken in or whether I wanted her to have more full cheeks and like some, you know, high cheekbones. I just kept going back and forth. I didn't have a perfectly clear idea in my head of exactly how I wanted her face shaped. And I had no experience at shaping faces with clay. I started to watch a video online of doing a doll face in clay, but their face was nothing like this. I mean, there, you know, it was a, a live, it's supposed to be a live um, person that they were making. And so it really wasn't, you know, it wasn't going to work for me to watch those videos. So I really am just winging it here. When I went to chop the back of this skull off, I really thought I might be starting the whole head all over again, but this clay was very forgiving. I would, um, I would definitely give it a try. I've never worked with air dry clay. I mean, maybe it's awesome, but watching one video, um, like a air dry versus oven bake, it was saying that it's just more forgiving, that it won't dry out on you as you're working with it, which was a plus for me. But I'll definitely give air dry clay a try too. Once I got the face looking as close as possible to what I wanted, I went ahead and took the head off of the doll because we won't be using that head, of course. Um, and then I pushed it down onto the body to make the hole so that later I can glue and attach the head to the body. You're going to follow the instructions on the clay of how long to bake it. For mine, it was about an hour and a half. You're going to need a stand for your doll if you're going to be putting your doll on a stand like I did. And Dollar Tree has wood rounds and wood dowels. And then all you would have to do is drill a hole in the wood round and put some glue in there and stick the dowel inside. But I already had this wood round and dowel already assembled. It came off of a wagon. It was the wheels of an old wagon. You're not going to need the legs and you're going to need to attach the torso to your stand. Now, the arms, I ripped them off, but don't do that. Leave the arms on because you're going to need the shoulders. And so later you'll see that I had to go back and put the arms back on, which required me to um, separate the torso. It separated in half, the front and back disconnected from each other, and I was able to put her shoulders back on.
But um, the reason why I'm cutting her arms in half is that I'm going to have to make them longer because she can't be very tall and have very short arms. She'll be sort of T-Rex looking and we don't want that. So I'm just gluing the torso onto the stand with hot glue. It worked out really well. And then we'll be working on the arms in a little bit. And what I used as the dress is just an old shirt that I got from the thrift store. It's a men's dress shirt in gray. So to give her arm extensions, I'm just poking a hole in both the hand portion and in the upper arm portion. And then I will be connecting the two parts with an extension of some wire. The piercing tool that I used to make the holes in the arms was from Dollar Tree, actually. They have two different sizes of this piercing tool, and it worked out perfect. Um, now, you probably won't be able to find this gauge of wire, and I'm not sure what gauge it is, but it's definitely thicker, um, you know, a thicker gauged wire. If anyone watching is into jewelry making, and has a guess on what gauge that looks like of that wire, it would be awesome if you could post it down in the comments. Her arms are going to be covered with sleeves, so you don't have to be perfect here with um, filling in the gaps on her arms. Masking tape worked perfectly, and you're just going to want to bulk up around the wire a little bit. After I glued her torso onto the stand, I went and put a lot of glue up inside the torso. Um, and then here I'm just adding some more glue and some masking tape to make her waistline. I'm just going to cut out a, a rectangle um, size to where I can wrap it around her torso. This is the beginnings of her dress, and we're going to be adding more to it, obviously. But if you are a seamstress, if you sew, you're really going to have an upper hand here. Um, I do not sew. I know how to do like basic hand stitching you know, putting buttons on the shirts and, um, you know, just a couple of basic embroidery stitches, but I really cannot sew. 
So what I'm doing is just doing it, um, you know, a rigged sort of way, but it worked out and it looked great in the end. And this makes it more accessible to everyone watching because there's going to be a lot of people that also don't sew like me. Now I wanted her dress, the skirt portion of her dress, to really go out away from her body and to be, um, you know, to, for it to have a large bottom. So I tried two other ways of doing this. One, making a wire form, and that was a fail. And then I tried to make an actual, like, hoop skirt, like the kind that, you know, like in the Victorian era that they wore underneath their dresses to make them go out very far. But what I landed on was this rope idea, and it worked out great. After baking the head, there was a couple of small cracks, but it did not worry me at all because I know I'm going to be using thick chalk paint, and it will, for the most part, fill in those cracks and look fine. You can see that to start out, I took a small section of the thick nautical rope that you get from Dollar Tree, and I made a basic belt, and that's the beginning um, of our, for our dress form here. And then to make the um, to make it more gradual to go up to her waistline to make it look more natural, I took some smaller twine to put on the top. And now I'm just gluing the thick nautical rope around itself, just like you would if you're wrapping something. But I'm gluing it a little bit on the outside of the rope so that it's standing out and we're going to build on it and make it's almost going to look like a ballerina um, tutu in the end sticking out away from her. I made the skirt portion very easy. You're just going to make a large circle of fabric and then you're going to cut a hole in the center um, and then slip it over her head. Then what you're going to do is take the excess on the sides, gather the excess on the sides with your hands and then wrap it around the back and pinch it and then you will glue that down. This will make the shape of the skirt look better to where it looks less like a poodle skirt. And it's also going to raise the back a little bit. I'm not sure what that's called. If anyone knows um, in, the, in, the, in the comments below, let us know. But where there's a rise on the back, like you know where the butt is, there's a rise and then it um, sticks out further away from the body than it does in the front.
To attach the head, I'm just going to put some hot glue into our clay head and press it down onto the neck. Now, I think the clay shrunk up just a little bit because I pressed really hard on this and it would not go all the way down. So it might have shrunk up a little bit. So you might want to make the hole in the head a little bit larger. Maybe wiggle it around a little bit whenever you put it down on there to make it just a little bit bigger, but don't make it too big or the head, you know, it's going to be easy for it to fall off. To make the sleeves, I'm literally just cutting rectangles to size, wrapping and gluing the sleeves onto her. It couldn't be easier. Now I'm going to give the all of her skin some white paint. The head didn't take as many coats as the um, shoulders and hands did, but you're just trying to color match to bring it all together, um, her head and the rest of the skin showing. I'm using Waverly Plaster Chalk Paint. Now, to trim out the dress and to cover up all the ugly, we are going to use this ribbon from Dollar Tree. And the belt, I want it to be skinnier than the portion on her wrapping around her shoulders. And so I'm just trimming this ribbon down and then I'm just going to glue it to her dress. And then I will do the same process to cover her shoulders. I try to buy as much th as many things as I can um, from the Dollar Tree and whenever I don't in the description box I always put a supply list and I always try to give alternative items that are from the Dollar Tree. To cover up the ends of her sleeves where you can see the um, end of the fabric, I'm just using this thin gray ribbon. You can paint your skeleton girl any way you like. Um, I'm going to take some black, some regular black acrylic paint and mix in a little bit of the plaster color just to lighten it up a little bit. It's a very dark gray, almost black that I end up with. And I'm just going to paint her eye sockets and her nose and her mouth. To draw the stitching on her mouth, I did not have a paintbrush small enough. It needed to be very tiny, so I'm just using a toothpick to draw that detail. I will also be using the same color to paint in between her fingers.
you can use any color you'd like to make her eyes. I'm using gold and I'm just going to paint two small ovals in the center of her eye sockets. You don't have to give her eyes, you can leave them blank. It's completely up to you, but I thought it brought her to life a little bit more. And she needs all the help she can get in that department. To give a little more dimension and character, I grunged up around her eyes a little bit and just did a little bit of distressing with a very dry brush to put some grunginess onto her face. I'm just showing this picture of her next to a um, ruler, so she's not quite a foot tall. If you liked this craft, hit the thumbs up button, and if you want to see the content that I put out every week, hit that subscribe button as well. I hope you all have a wonderful day.